there guys, uh, today I wanted to make a video about how to resize boxes for shipping without a resizing tool. Uh, maybe you're shipping something that doesn't quite fit into a smaller box or you don't want to spend that extra money and go with a big box, overpack it with a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, how you're going to do that uh, is you're going to take that smaller box and resize it to a bigger box. So I'm going to show you that today. Uh, the tools you're going to need is you need a good box cutter. That'll come in very handy. Uh, I, I like this version because the blade, it, you can change it very easily and I feel this is a little sharper. This is one of those flip blades with a little safety on the side. I got this from um, Home Depot for about 7 bucks on sale, but I think you can get them quite cheaply on Amazon for maybe about $10. I'll try to post a link of what I can find down below. And I also have a, a generic box cutter from Japan. Uh, we've been in this business for quite a while, so whenever we visit Asia, we'll pick up a box cutter from there. And this was one of the ones that I liked the most. Uh, there's a lot of extra blades that actually get carried inside of it. So whenever this blade becomes dull, I just change it out. But I do like to use the Husky more often when I'm cutting the boxes to resize. And uh, another thing you're going to need is a tape gun. Now I have a old, old, old model of a tape gun that's just been passed down from my parents to me and I got some extra ones that I have behind me. But I have used the Uline tape gun if any of you have Uline catalogs. The Uline tape gun is probably the best tape gun I ever used so smooth it just way easier to pull the tape and um, they sell them on Amazon as well I think they're $15 but if you have a little bit of money and you want to invest in a good tape gun so you're taping quite often the Uline tape gun is pretty good I have never used a better tape gun and it's light it's easy to use um, you don't really need a fancy tape gun you can use any tape gun but the U-Line tape gun is great. Uh, you're also going to need an extra piece of cardboard. Now, you're going to use this cardboard for the lid because uh, you're going to cut the smaller box and you're going to cut the flaps so that it folds down and it stands higher on the box, which I'll be showing you. But you're going to need a box lid. So a box lid is something that will fit nice and snug on top of the box. Um, to replace the extra cardboard that you cut so that the box could get taller. And um, some of some people like to also fill in the lat that it makes with this extra piece of cardboard. Uh, but I'll show you as we go along um, cutting the box, uh, resizing it to a larger size. Alright then, we'll get right into it. I hope this video helps you guys. So right here, um, we got the big box right next to the small box and we're just gonna pretend to throw a small item in there so you get an idea. Say this was a fragile pot right here. You put it inside this box, you wrap it up. It might be safe enough and ready to ship but most likely you're gonna want to double box it. Now, it's gonna be sometimes hard to find a box, double box, and you might have one like this one where it doesn't quite exactly fit all the way. It's got maybe a half an inch over the box. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this piece of foam, put it over the top, because you want a cushion layer on the top of the box, a cushion layer on the bottom of the box, and you want to fill the sides as well. Um, for some of the items, you might want to put foam in the corners. So you want to go opposite sides. Uh, one here, two, and then one in the diagonal part. Another one here, and then another one in the diagonal part. Uh, how it will look is you're going to probably find a piece like this foam. Cut small slits and put them into the corners. Uh, and then you can fill the corners with newspaper. If it's not 
uh, a big deal like there's already foam in the first box you might not have to do the corners or if your outside box is a very sturdy maybe two ply box you won't need to do this as well so how to do um, how to resize this box is you, you're first gonna tape up the sides so you're gonna have the box with all four flaps facing up and you're gonna tape up the sides and now we have a taller box as you can see it's standing taller already but there's no flaps so what you'll need to do is take that piece of foam that you have for the top part of your um, box take one of your box cutters and start cutting um, using the foam as you know a base so that you make a straight line so following that piece of foam you're gonna cut and feel free to shift the foam around just try to make sure that it's somewhat straight. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, if you're trying to get it on FedEx, where they do do it by dimensional weight, you might want to measure out and see if it is the right under that one inch, so that you do not have to worry about it being at a higher size, thus higher dimensional weight. So. You're gonna cut all four sides like I'm doing here and put this piece of foam back in the middle. Now, what you're gonna notice is after you cut those four sides, you can actually fold the flaps in. Uh, sometimes you're gonna have a little bit of tape because when you tape the right uh, rounds around the box so that it could stand. So what you're gonna do is find where you made that cut, follow the line and push out with the blade so it cuts the tape on the outside so you can just follow where you made that cut and cut the tape so that you can actually do the fold do the same for all the sides so find where you made the cut find where you made the cut and what you're gonna do just fold down the box from where you made the slits inside the cut. And there, we're almost done already. So what you're gonna do after this is take that piece of cardboard you had, measure it over the top, cut it down just a bit, so that it fits right over the top. Fold the four slides back in. Take your tape gun. Now, one of the things we learned after years of doing this is you're gonna press down on the side, squeeze, hold the top, squeeze, hold the bottom, squeeze. This is so that you can keep the box shape relatively square and uh, you can eyeball this and uh, you're gonna try to keep it as square as possible so it looks a little bit more professional and you can keep it under that FedEx size. If it sticks out on any side and it's over maybe like that inch mark, they're gonna charge you for that inch. So you wanna finish. And there we go. We got a resized box. Nice and easy. Uh, what some people will like to do is take an extra piece of cardboard and fill that gap area right here, but I don't really do that. Uh, but it is up to you. It does make the box more flush if you do take a piece of cardboard. I'll show you guys right here. So look, sized it. 
take this cardboard and we'll fill it in right here. We'll tape that up and it'll look flush. All right, guys. And I'm gonna bring this back up and then we're gonna go back to a regular angle. I'll finish up. All right, guys. For the end of the video, I wanted to recap about how to resize the box and also talk about the pros and cons of using this method without the resizing tool. All right, so to resize the box, you first need a box cutter, a tape gun, your box, and your item in a box already. So you're gonna put that item in the box with the flaps open. After that, uh, you're gonna tape up the sides. After you tape up the sides so that the flaps are standing, you're gonna measure, put a piece of foam on top of the box that's already inside and measure out the area above the box you need to cut. Cut into the four flaps and cut into the tape where you taped around the boxes just above the foam a height and then fold the flaps down. After you do that, you take an extra piece of cardboard, put it over the top of the foam and close the box. There might be a little slant slit in the middle of the box. You can fill it up with a piece of cardboard so that it's flush and that's how you resize the box. Alright, so the pros of using uh, this resizing method is you can be more flexible with the boxes you have. Uh, smaller boxes are going to fit um, your items better because you can just make them taller, resize those boxes, but make sure those boxes are sturdy so that they don't just break on you because you've made too many weird adjustments to them. Uh, another thing is that you can save a lot on shipping because you might not need to use that bigger box. You can use the smaller box and just maybe make it a little bit taller so that it can fit that uh, item that you want to put in it. Uh, one of the cons, you're not going to be able to make your box look quite perfect. Uh, the box resizer, it will keep the size perfect for you because it won't have human error. Your hand will shake a little when you try to cut the box over the foam. You're not going to make perfect cuts. It's going to take a lot of practice before you get good at it. Uh, but that's where the box resizer comes in. If you want it to look perfect, you can use the box resizer. Another con is that this method actually won't work well with some types of boxes. You have to look for boxes that are sturdy and strong. Um, so boxes that maybe like when you make a cut, it'll tear into the paper and pull a lot of the paper along. Those won't work quite as well. I mean, you could still do it, but it will not look professional. It might degrade some of the quality of the box and you might not really want to send it after you do it. You'll look at it and you'll notice that this, this is definitely a lower quality box. So that's the end of the video, guys. If you like this stuff, please subscribe and like this video. Uh, my name is William, and thank you for watching. Peace out, guys.